So those friends stay with you for life. They know all the little things, stupid things you did as a kid. So if you meet 20 years down the road, they're going to say, remember the time when you jumped off the balcony yeah, in the pool, yeah, yeah. you know, and no one else knows that. <clears throat> and some of the things are, are like things you don't want to remember. So then you move on to college <laughs> and university, you meet a new bunch of friends. They, they meet you the day one. They don't know anything about you. So you can start fresh, right? You can start fresh every, every four or five years. So, you know, and then you have those friends from university and college that you, that you consider another group of friends. And then obviously there's, you know, there's family friends, there's work friends. Then, then, and then there's, um, I guess, uh, uh, you're, you're not married, but I have my wife's friends, you know, there, mm-hmm. you get so many that, that, uh, that word is thrown around so easily, but they're not really, it's easy to say that, but you're not only, you're not really that close. You might have 10 really good friends, right? Hey. Can you see me? <laughs> yeah, I can see you. I can hear can you. Can you hear me? Can you oh, hear yeah. Me? You're all good, okay. Lenny. Thanks so much, man, for making the time to come on the show. I really well, I kind of had to find a spot because my son's moving out tomorrow. And oh. I, have, I have furniture everywhere that he's moving, taking out. So I found a room <laughs> where I could actually, you know, you're, nice. sitting, you're sitting up on top of uh, <clears throat> Halloween candies right now. Oh, you know? nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, whenever you're moving out, that's like the worst time to be doing stuff in your home because there's literally just boxes everywhere. Yeah, it's just everywhere. Like, everywhere. like I use this screen behind me through the Zoom app that I just like because yeah. this is like the design that I'm I'm act I'm trying to do for real behind me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's taking a little bit longer than I thought it would. But it's nice because I just have so much shit behind me that you wouldn't even realize because it just auto green screens. Block, yeah, yeah, yeah. Technology, it's improved. Yeah. It's so great. Man. That's right. Um, when I asked you about like your one word for the podcast, like what came to mind for you? Well, I was thinking of um of the word uh, friends, like friendship. Friends, friends or friendship? Well, friends, like uh, okay. because we have different kinds of friends in our lives, right? Yeah. Also, very relevant because of Matthew Perry just passing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get us into the algorithm with that one, Lenny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that was sad. That was too bad. Yeah. I found out, you know, what's the worst way I, I found out the worst way to find out a celebrity death is you're at a, I was at a Halloween party and I was having a great time. And then out of nowhere, some idiot on their phone, <laughs> I don't want to say some mm. idiot, but some idiot on their phone just goes, Hey, did you guys hear? And then just shares the news. And then we're all just bummed out for the next like hour, hour and a half. Like, well, everyone's, like, everyone's going sucks. on their phone, right? Yeah, everyone's and then everyone's on their phone at that point, yeah. right? It's just like a trickle effect. Mm. Everyone just starts popping up under their phone. Just the one of the cons of having a phone at a party. There should be a rule where you put it on do not disturb. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? He was from Ottawa too, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was Canadian. Yeah. But, uh, it's crazy. Like, not a lot of people know that. That the whole Canadian entertainment industry is very shit at routinely recognizing the people that made made it you know what i mean oh yeah they only ever talk about the old ones and it's very like you never hear about like oh there's this new up-and-coming person even if they're in america being like they're canadian also like take pride in that right there's a lot of them out there's a lot of canadians out there like actually even like um uh well trudeau apparently read about it he went to school with trudeau when they were kids like yeah very very young and his father was uh, his stepfather is that guy that it was on television the news anchor Oh uh, yeah, I remember reading about that. He's a, it's a stepfather. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. uh friends, let's go back to friends or yeah. uh what specifically why did that like pop in your head of all the words you could have chosen? Uh first I don't know. I was I actually was looking through Facebook and I'm and you know, Facebook is strange. Like you're friends with so many people, but that's not real a real they're not real friends. Like they're just people there are maybe 10 good friends, for example, and the rest are people that you connect with just to get spots and things like that. Yeah, right? so yeah, yeah. At people, least from yeah, a comedian well, like, perspective, yeah. Yeah, for a comedian perspective. It's like, so, I mean, I'm just wondering, like, the how they, how they, t- the comics, like, I have friends, we have different kinds of friends. For example, we have friends from grade school, right? Mm-hmm. Then you move on to middle school and then high school. So those high school friends are the ones that you probably remember the most, right? Yeah. Yet, if you had a bad high school time, you can't wait to get out, right? So yeah. you move to, so those friends stay with you for life. They know all the little things, stupid things you did as a kid. So if you meet 20 years down the road, they're going to say, remember the time when you jumped off the balcony yeah, in the pool, yeah, yeah. you know, and no one else knows that. <clears throat> and some of the things are, are like things you don't want to remember. So then you move on to college <laughs> and university, 
you meet a new bunch of friends, they they meet you the day one, they don't know anything about you. So you can start fresh, right? You can start fresh every every four or five years. So, you know, and then you have those friends from university and college that you that you consider another group of friends. And then obviously there's, you know, there's family friends, there's work friends. Then, then and then there's um, I guess uh, uh you're you're not married, but I have my wife's friends, you know, there mm-hmm. you get so many that that uh, the word is thrown around so easily, but they're not really it's easy to say that, but you're not only you're not really that close. You might have 10 really good friends, right? Yeah. I don't know where you out there in Ottawa. You moved, did you live in Ottawa originally? No, no, I've never lived in Ottawa. I've been here like a few times and a few times. I like, you know, my whole life. I grew up in Brockville, so it's just like an hour away. So oh. anytime we wanted to go to the big mall, you'd drive up to Ottawa. Mm-hmm. Or and so I, I knew and I had friends from high school that moved here. Um again, going back to that word friends, it was friends because of circumstance which i think is a very different type of friend they're not really an acquaintance but they're not really a friend it's kind of like a weird like middle ground um but i knew like people here i had connections i guess you could say and then one of my best friends since the time i was like 10 years old has been living here for the last like five six years so i was like you know it'd be cool to just like reconnect with these people who i haven't seen in the last like nine years. well that's that's a good that's a good uh, like at least you have some familiarity with somebody yeah. when you go to a strange place you've never been there before right yeah it's tough so you my, got my girlfriend you... was born and raised in toronto and i mm. she came with me to ottawa and she did not knowing a single person mm. and i don't i still don't know how she did it because it's like i would be terror i was in that position before when i first moved from brockville to oshawa and then to toronto i didn't know anyone like anto chan was the first like comic oh i know i, really, I remember anto, I really yeah. met. And we we kind of like stuck together the whole time ever, ever since that because I just didn't know anyone. Well, is Anto still? Where's Anto in Toronto? Or, or I'm pretty sure. I he's thought in I, I thought I saw him in Milton once. I, I work in Milton. Yeah, he's popping all over the place because sometimes yeah. he'll text me and he'll be like, like randomly he'll just be like, "Hey, I'm in Ottawa. Like, we should hang out." <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. "Oh, okay, cool." He's but killing at least it. You move, at least you move somewhere where there's a comedy scene for Ottawa. You know? You yeah, like I wasn't gonna go back to Brockville because I'm like, there's nothing. Mm-hmm there other than just nostalgia i guess but i'd get bored of that real quick right yeah so at least ottawa i already know the kind of Ottawa. like i knew howard howard put me at yuck yucks on Mm elgin like when i first started you know so i felt even like okay the bookers are gonna remember me jason saw me at uh absolute Absolute. one of the competitions so i'm like Mm -hmm. he's gonna remember me and he's here in ottawa so i felt it was a good career move for me to move to a cheaper place rent wise Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a smaller pool of comedians so that I could work my way up to hosting weekends, headlining, featuring. Yeah, you, you do more, say. more time, more you time. Do more for sure. Quality, quality time. Yeah, yeah. And actual quality. Like the sets on Mondays at Absolute New Orleans are 10 minute sets. So it's just mm-hmm. like wonderful to be able to work out that much time. Yeah, Yuck Yucks is still five minutes every Tuesday if you go there. That That's sucks. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. You're like, it's, it, and it's a the, whole thing. Like, you got to plan your day around it, right? Like, and I'm on, I'm on the Rising Stars on Wednesdays. It's like a, it's like a fast track. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, so we we've been there for a year and a half now, and there was like, start off with ten. Now there's fourteen of us. So you only get five minutes each. It's not really. It's good that you're on the stage every week for five minutes. But now they're splitting us. They're doing. They're splitting the groups in two. <clears> so now there's only going to be eight. So it gives us about eight or ten minutes every week. That's every better. It should week. at least be seven week. minutes. At yeah. least seven. You know, you mm-hmm. can't really get. You no, can't really you communicate an idea. You know, it's funny that you're talking about this because I remember when we were at Absolute in Toronto once, and uh, you got the lotto spot. We were all waiting to try to see if we could get lotto. Yeah. But like, there was something where like people were going over times, and you mm-hmm. were you had like a seven minute set, and they were like, yeah. "We need you to do five or four or something." It was some yeah. ridiculous time, like four yeah. minutes. Yeah. And you were like, I'm just going to go say everything super fast yeah. and don't even wait for like laughter. Just keep on to the next thing. It was just so funny to watch. Well, the thing is over there. Yeah, you have to because uh, Sean was very strict and Ryan were very strict with the times there. Right. Yeah. Because they want you to do six and a half minutes. Maybe you can do seven. Right. And it's and it's tough, especially when you get the lotto spot too. you're just thrown in there. It's it's, uh, it's a great room, though. Right. You know, when you come to oh, Toronto, so like, I'm sure when you're going to come back to Toronto, you're going to book yourselves a few spots. Try. And absolute, yeah. absolute would be one of them probably right so yeah for sure it's one of those clubs that is just like uh a boost of confidence oh yeah you and your material right like the, the crowds that are there are ready to laugh and the room is set up in such a way where it's like conducive for laughter everybody's yeah. packed in tightly close to each other 
the people behind can see because they're elevated to another level. Uh, the ceiling on the stage is lower, you know, like it's, that's, it's designed it's that's what, perfectly. That's what Jason, that's what Jason does. It starts at 830. It's over 1005 always. Yeah. Exactly. It's, so right? it's dependable then as well mm-hmm. as a business, right? Like you go in there as just a patron off the street and you're like, I mm-hmm. know. I'm going to come in here. It's going to cost, I'm going to get free tickets sometimes, yeah. right? Like you fill in the thing, you might get 10 free tickets. Yeah. Get a little dinner. Like, you know, you're out at a specific time. So it's just yeah. like. Guaranteed. Yeah. People always shit on absolute when it comes to like submitting recordings from, you know, for festivals or whatever. But I'm like, do you think the festival bookers are stupid? Like they know if an audience is overly laughing, they don't care. They're looking at like what the material is. Yeah. Like, can, can we put this on TV? Is it good? Like they don't yeah, care. But the, it's it, I think it's just it, they don't pay the people to laugh there. They're just no. They just, yeah, like, so it's not like it's a, I don't know. People always say, oh, oh yeah, it's an easy it's, room. Yeah. Well, this good. Is that's a good thing. Because, Try out your new stuff. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, well, they seat you properly. They seat everybody properly. Yeah. Right. And they don't talk. They don't have the waitresses talking during the show. And, and they they're focused on, on every act. It's a good setup. I mean, like I'm an yeah. MC, even the regular night, an MC, a middle and a and a headliner. It's yeah. perfect, right? Yeah. Person greets you at the door and like make sure you know exactly where everything yeah. is, where you're going. Like it's just, it's just a well run business. Yeah. But like um, when it comes to friends, I don't know if, if you had this same same experience, but I like there was a lot of people that I thought were friends that when the pandemic happened, I was like, Oh, that's, that's just, mm-hmm. an, that's just an acquaintance, man. Mm-hmm. Like that, that was just someone you met like, and then they, you, you added each other online. Like it's nothing yeah. deeper than that. Cause in my head, I had always been been like, Oh yeah. My, if I was referring to someone, I would say, you know, my friend, this, my friend, da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. and it kind of, like you said, it devalued the word a little bit. And I've had to rearrange my thinking when it comes to like, who are my friends? Yeah, because uh, friends would would uh, would uh, check up on you during COVID. They would exactly. they would call you on the phone. They wouldn't mm-hmm. just go on Zoom or text. They they phone you and yeah, say what's yeah. going on, how are you feeling, you know. You want to meet up but, in a park and have a beer or something. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> COVID for some people it was I was I was all right with it because I worked in I worked in the meet the uh, so you were at, uh, solo. So I was working every day, and yeah. in fact, uh, one one whole when it first started that first year, I worked uh, nights. I worked from eight in the evening until five in the morning. Uh, getting the stuff ready for the customers because every morning we, they they rip they take everything out of the, out of the out of the store the next day everybody was buying everything so I would work and it was a whole summer which was good because you know what the only good thing about it was um, Johnny was that we none of us missed any comedy because everyone was not doing it yeah it's not like just, yeah. it's not like just Johnny was not getting spots on the shows everybody yeah. was nobody you didn't was, feel right? the I'm falling behind sort yeah. of thing because yeah, you're like that's the only no one's advantage doing it. yeah for sure yeah that also even changed like my mindset on that feeling of like, Oh, I'm falling behind. I'm not getting as many spots as I should be getting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was never like a jealousy thing. It was always just like a man, they're killing it. Like I need to get my shit together. Like I need yeah. to write, write new jokes or whatever it is for that time period. I kind of just like was able to take a breath. It felt like, and, and yeah. just go, who cares? Like, yeah. Cause it's not a race anymore. No, it's like, You're what do you want to do? Do yeah. that. And uh, an audience will find you because they have similar interests. Yeah. Like you describing the experience of like how you meet friends. I'm like, I immediately re- relate to this. Yeah. And a- so, so many other people do. So it's just like, even in that, we all have stuff that kind of brings us together. And you don't need to, you don't need to get every festival to feel like you've made it. Whatever yeah. That means. Yeah. And no, I just like a full room. I don't care where it is. Yeah. Uh, I don't care for how long time, how much time I get, as long as it's a full room and everyone's, you're having a good time. It doesn't, doesn't have to be a festival. It doesn't have to be uh taped or, or it doesn't, you don't have to get paid sometimes. It's just a room full of people that came to watch comedy. Right. Yeah. Cause so are you doing like, do you want to do comedy? Yeah. Are you doing it? You are great. Yeah. yeah. Then you, you made it, you did it. Yeah. Cause there's so many people who go, I don't know how you do that. I could never do that. Like I want to, but I could never do that. And you're like, man, that sucks. Well, like that that's someone who hasn't made it because they haven't yeah. made that crossover to actually getting past their nerves and just doing the thing that they want to mm-hmm. do. Some people are some people. You, I know a lot of people that I think would make great would be great at comedy, but it's yeah. not their interest. So yeah, if it's not your, you got to kind of like it, right? 
You can't yeah. just do it, you know, out of the blue. Like, you know, once, you know. Mark I'm, was saying that about there were some people that he went to Humber with who were like, oh, if I don't get JFL. Mark here, Synagogue? No, uh, Which, Mark Hallworth. Oh, Mark Hall, um, yeah, Mark Hallworth, yeah. Yeah, he was just on the episode before and he was like, yeah. You know, there's people that I went to school with where they're like, oh, if I don't get JFL this year, like their first year of comedy, yeah. I'm quitting. And then they did. Ooh. And I was kind of like, good. That that mm-hmm. just means they didn't want it enough. Mm. Like if you're so if you're so willing to quit after not getting something, you never wanted to be a comedian then. Yeah, it's 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 always it's you're always chasing the carrot, right? And, yeah. And so, you're know, someone day you'll catch it. Or you know what? Sometimes it's not. Listen, you know this, too. Sometimes it's not always the best comic that gets chosen for these things. It's because they have sure. they, uh, the way life is now. They have a diversity thing and they have to fill those gaps. And right? it's not only that. It's also like people. Some people's networks are just better. Like mm-hmm. some people just met the right people at the right time. They yeah. were in the right place and they got that opportunity. Mm-hmm. And and that's what this business is. If mm-hmm. you're not like in front of the right people, you might not get that big opportunity, even if you you think you're the best and everyone tells you you're the best. It's like, doesn't matter unless you're in front of the right people who can get yeah. you those things. It doesn't matter. So just focus on always, like yourself, always be right? prepared. Right. Yeah, like they exactly. Say, they say lucky is uh, preparation and opportunity when they meet, like, like, you know, like you just, you don't know when, and, and yeah. it's not, sometimes it's actual, you're just happened. Like you said, you happen to be in the right group of people, at the right time. Mm. And somebody sees you and they go, Hey, you know what? Um, check out this guy. And then, and then, they they put you in a festival. They put you in something this, and you didn't even try, you know? Yeah. So, like I, I've been trying to get more club spots at Absolute. And I kept, I, I, I talked to Jason. I texted him. I did all this, the stuff you're supposed to do. No one tells you like what day to text or what, mm-hmm. the, what the, no one, no, this is the thing. No comedian shares the information with you. Oh, listen. You're <laughs> it's right. the I, weirdest I, thing. It's like, can I, we help each other here? I've it wasn't until I had a great set, though, in front of people that were able to vouch for me that I was finally able to get in. You mm-hmm. know, like that's all what had to happen. I had to keep having sets and then have the right set in front of the right people. And that was it. I've 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 tried to help as many people as I can to do. Yeah. If they don't know, I try and tell them what co- contest enter and things like that. And I would tell them the way the absolute is. It's the first Tuesday of every month. You have to mm. email that day and you're not going to get on that month. You're going to get on the next month. But keep. But people want to do. They do it once, and then they don't do it anymore. You can't. Yeah. You have to be consistent. Every month you have to do it. Same with Yuck Yucks. Every week you have to uh, apply to Yuck Yucks, whatever AMC yuckyucks.com. And every week you have to ask for a spot because if you miss out, but if Ryan from Yuck Yucks sees your name there every single week, eventually you, Johnny's going to get a Lenny's going to get a spot, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. But they figure, oh, they didn't give it to me. They don't want me. But what does it take to, to email somebody? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally just put it in my calendar. Yeah the time to send it and i go oh mm-hmm. yeah send it and then you know mm-hmm. it's not something you think about constantly mm-hmm. it's just like oh it's the 15th it's time to email yeah. people like and i had that problem too as a comedian i was like scared to ask for spots especially mm-hmm. people like producing shows i was just like i feel weird like because when i'm running shows i don't i don't usually give spots to people that ask for it I like Mm. to pick the lineup. So I Mm -hmm. pick the people that I like and that I've seen before and I know are trustworthy and have good material so that I don't look like an idiot and putting on Mm. a bad show. Um, But I was like, then you start getting your head of like, well, why is no one picking me? You know, like, why is no one just sending me a message being, hey, you want to get on the show? And it's what we said. It's you have to show face. You have to be doing well in front of these people for them to build that same rapport that you might have with them, right? Yeah, but even like even if I'm not on a show and I'm I'm home, I'll go to a show just to be seen and meet, meet sure, people, talk yeah. to people. You never know you're gonna meet somebody, get a spot somewhere. And you know it's hard that um, like for you to get spots if you run a show, people think okay, if I put you on my show, I want you to put me on your show. But that doesn't mm-hmm. have to doesn't have to no. be that way. It's not no. it doesn't it's it's based, if he thinks you're talented enough to be on your show, then put me on. But don't put me on expecting me to put you on mine because yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. how it works. <clears throat> And I'm, people, I'm paying you. I'm you're not doing. Yeah. I'm not doing you a favor so that you can yeah. do me a favor. Like, it's not, and a lot of people are are doing are doing are becoming like they're producing their own shows and they're just putting let's say majority of their friends on right, which is understandable because like you said, you, right? You can rely on them, right? Yeah. You can call them at last minute. Maybe sometimes you can't afford to pay them, and they'll say, "Don't worry about it," right? Yeah, give me so, next week or whatever. Like, yeah, so, so you, they're you better just, to work. You hook with. up. You hook up with those people, and 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 you you feel comfortable. And then you'll throw in a new person once in a while. Yeah. Right. And that's how it works. At least you get to stage time. 
practice. Yeah. And I think that's like, you know, kind of important for comedy is to stop making it such a solo effort. Like it's good that there are groups of friends in comedy that give each other spots. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Actually. Yeah. Like, I think we need more of that. Like, well, what does it take to just like meet a couple people at a mic? Be like, Hey, you guys want to run a show together? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. We can all just rotate ourselves on the lineup. Brilliant. Yeah. And we you can make some money. Profit. Yeah. Like what? Well, there's nothing to lose there. And it's just like, no. So many people have this mindset of like, no, it's just me against everyone. Like yeah. I have to just go. I got to make the money. I got to make some money. I got to do. But if you, if you get for example, you can book, you know, a comedy bar, you can book the, the cabaret room for like whatever it is during the week. It's cheap. It only holds 44 people. Even if you get like half the room full and there's four or five comics, you just split the profit amongst yourselves. Yeah. And and you have and a night Toronto, where you can do two minutes. You can sell tickets for 20 bucks. It's yeah. Toronto. You know, mm -hmm. everything else is so if chicken is twenty two fifty nine, you can yeah. sell a comedy ticket for 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's just what it is. Right. Like, we have to start valuing ourselves that way as artists as well. Like, no more free shows unless that shit is an open mic. Yeah. Free, free is not, it's not free. It's not, it's an, it starts with F. It does nothing. <laughs> it's just a waste of effort. And it's going to make the producer running it just super bitter because yeah. they're going to have a bad night that they're going to have to actually work and do something. Yeah. And they're, they realize I'm not getting paid to do this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like the audience and the that. audience is just, the audience is just comics. Like, just, yeah. You know, yeah. Around. Yeah. The worst. So it's know, fine it's, in an open mic, but like, you yeah. know, a show, a like book a book show. show? Yeah. No, don't do that guys. No, that's insane. Um, there's but a question. You, oh yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no you go, go ahead. ahead. I, I can delay my, I can delay my question. Go ahead. No, no. I just going to ask you, you mentioned your friends in, in Ottawa, but how long have you been there now? Uh, I moved here in 2021, October, so, 2021. And you, do you work from home? No, no. So I, I did work from home for a mm -hmm. little while and I kept trying to find work from home jobs, but man, I just got really tired of it. Like mm -hmm. it was just exhausting. It sounds crazy. Cause you're like, you're just sitting. I don't understand. Yeah. But it's, it's a mental state, right? Like I would roll out of bed half an hour before work and then come sit at a desk for like eight hours staring at a screen uh doing like doing nothing and barely going outside and it just started to fuck with me like i was just like sure. i feel depressed like this is not like how life is supposed to be and then so i quit those i i had served at sunset grill before so i went back mm -hmm. to a sunset grill started serving and i was immediately happier because i'm like talking to people all day yeah you talk to people yeah yeah, you're like you you have some camaraderie with your coworkers too. And then I'm now I'm thinking of bits and stuff while I'm at yeah. work. Where when I was at home, I couldn't think about jokes. Mm. I yeah. just the my brain just wasn't active. It was just focusing on what was in front of me. And uh now I sell cars. That's great. Yeah. Do you do it from <laughs> a location? Better. From a from a from a car dealership or from yeah. from it's yeah. like a it's like a showroom. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a like experience showroom center, well, and then we pull from inventories. But it's it's much better than working from home. Because well, um, I, selling cars, people. selling cars like um, nowadays you don't really sell a car anymore, right? I mean, the no. person knows they want a car. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I went to buy a car recently. I it's knew very I wanted. Easy. Yeah, the salesman didn't do anything really. He just told me what was on, you know, yeah. what he could save me, and yeah. and uh, promised me some good things and everything. Otherwise, a friend of ours, a comic, John Malonis. Do you, you know John? I know well, of him. I don't know if I've met him, but I know well, of he's him for a, sure. he's in sales. He sells for Hyundai, I think, right? Oh, cool. Hyundai. So he says he loves it. Like he's, yeah. he's every day, you know, he's got something different going on and he's, you know, talks to people. Like you said, you, you, yeah. you, you have your group of work friends, right? Yeah. Work friends. You look forward to seeing every day. You talk about certain things that you don't talk about with your other friends, right? Yeah. Because you have cars in common. And then he, he loves doing it. If you like doing your job, it's not really a job, right? Like they say, it's true. That's what I mean. I mean like, like comedy. If you can make money at comedy be awesome right yeah darren frost said this to me too because i was talking to him about the whole having a job and doing comedy yeah. thing and he's like we need to stop with this myth that you mm. need to quit your job so that you can do comedy for 10 yeah. minutes at night or yeah. at most an hour a night mm -hmm. like it, it's ridiculous because when you're working a job like i was saying compared to the work from home your brain is active. You're talking to people. Your brain is just, and you're a comedian. So your brain is naturally going to be thinking of how can I turn this into a joke? Yeah, for sure. And it's, that's invaluable life experience that translates the best on stage. No one wants to hear about your acting audition. Yeah. 
or like it, no one cares. No one can relate to that stuff. Somebody can relate to buying a car or yeah. going to the butcher or yeah. whatever, wherever you work, you know, like people can relate to those things better. So it's actually beneficial to keep your job. I think as long as you can, yes, until comedy like, starts paying you more Then once comedy's like, paying you more, get out, you know? Well, mine, uh, I work part-time now. I started part-time a couple of years ago because my father was not well. I mean, the mm. retirement home. So, and so I stayed part-time and it worked out good for me because I work two, three, three days a week, let's say, uh, depends on the hours. Yeah. I have my nights. I can go out and do shows. And then, and then uh, I, and now, now I make a little bit here and there, like, you know, $50, a hundred bucks here. And so I supplement those days that I'm not working those two days. Sometimes I, I make enough to cover those two days if had I worked them. So I'm, That's I'm a doing great way my to life think about for, it. Yeah. for an hour a night, right? Or That's whatever, what I mean. whatever time it takes. You have to just like find whatever will work for your schedule. But like I'm working yeah. over 40 hours a week and I'm still producing a podcast, yeah. still producing a monthly show, still doing pe- other people's shows. Plus I have a girlfriend, you know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. there's those are things, friends. I have to hang with friends. I have to go with, yeah. hang with my family. It's like people think like, oh, that's too much. And the, if you got rid of the 40 hour week job, then you'd have more time to do those things. Yeah, Not true. I did freelancing where I had all the time in the world and you suddenly don't know what to do with that time. Yeah. It's, At least it's you're a, focused every day. Yeah. Yeah. You're focused. I have like a schedule. Like I, yeah. I do this and then I do that and I do that. Mm-hmm. And you're taking advantage of every mm-hmm. second of the day, but it's definitely tough to do that without, without a job. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was going to say, there's a question that I ask all of the guests on the podcast mm-hmm. and uh, it's, if you could make a phone call to 15 year old Lenny, Mm-hmm. just as an example to put yourself in the mindset of a 15 year old so that if anyone young is listening to this podcast mm-hmm. they can get some advice what advice would you give to your 15 year old self knowing what you know now oh well uh okay and my backstory for me at uh, 15 i started working part-time with my father at his butcher shop you know and what happens when you're that age it's before you don't drive yet right so you have no car mm-hmm. yet so you're dependent on your parents car and your parents for everything still when you're 15, right? And so you, then when you you start working and make a little bit of money, you think you're a big shot. You're making so much money because you have no expenses. You don't realize yeah, you have yeah. no expenses. So I got fell into the situation where I work with my father weekends. Then I work on the, in the summertime, make good money. And I go, geez, what do I go to school for? I mean, I'm making all this money, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, my, my thing was when you're 15, you should follow – your, do what you think you want to do for the rest of your life. Do it like try it at that when you're young at that age because when you get older, it's harder to go back and start over again. Like I always wanted to do like um, uh, commercials and uh, acting type stuff, you know, and and I never did it, you know. And I did, I just did like when I, I think when I was like 21 or 22, I entered a contest and that was mm-hmm. oh, no, I did some some uh, um, improv, uh, Second City. I signed up with like Second City. I liked it, right? But had I started. Like even comedy, I started when I was 45, okay? Yeah. I started very late. I started in 2006. People are 45 and they're finishing their careers now, like in comedy. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, and I started way late. So if you're 15 and you have, and you know what you enjoy doing, try and focus on that as much as you can. Uh, and because eventually things will come your way. Like don't, don't let, don't think, don't make money be your motivating factor. That's yeah. What I, w- I would say. No, that's very good advice. Especially like, when you're at an age where money doesn't really, like you said, you have no expenses, money doesn't, you don't really have a concept of money at that point. Mm-hmm. Then why would you direct your efforts towards something you don't understand, gaining something you don't understand? Mm-hmm. It makes so much more sense to just like go after the things that are just at least bringing you joy. Or you're thinking about it all the time. You're like, man, I can't wait to 15. I want to be a wrestler. You yeah. know, <laughs> like that was all I thought about. I read yeah. biographies to real, like, you know, get in the headset of what the lifestyle was going to be and like mentally prepare myself. Yeah. Like I was in it. And then I went to a school and I did it. And then I just at the end of trying it, I was like, no, you know what? It's actually not for me. I thought it was. Well, see, I went for it. It wasn't. Let me try that's good. comedy, you know. But that's good because if you have, but if, especially if you're 15 and you have a family that supports you, sure, you've got yeah. it made. You don't realize. How important Made. your friends, your friends and family are to you at that time, because if they'll support you, like I remember my mother when I was 18 or 19, she told me at that time, she says, she knew I liked, she goes, if you want to go somewhere, you want to go to New York or somewhere, you go, you go, we, we pay for, and I didn't know what to do then. I, I'm not going to go for, to New York. I'm, I, I want sure. to do anything. I want to do something in Toronto, right? First, right? 
Yeah. And so I just said, no, no. But if your parent, if you have parents who support you and you don't have any expenses, there's no reason why you shouldn't try and do what you want to do at the time. Right. Yeah. I mean, I can understand if you they kick you out of the house or you 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 don't have any, your family doesn't have enough money to support you. That's a different sorts of financial problems. But if you most families are able to support their kids and let them do what they want, it's just we don't do. We're just like our kids. Our parents were kids too, and they probably didn't listen to what their parents said, right? Of course, yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. Just a, it's just a it's a circle of life, right? <laughs> It'll never be that way. You want the best for them, but you're yeah. thinking like from your point of view, mm. like I uh, like say say your parents always dreamed about going to New York, but instead they went here and they, yeah. they, but they made enough money where they're like, you know what? We could go to New York, but we mm. can't, but Lenny mm. could, yeah. you know, they like, put that live our you're like, I don't want to go to New York. <laughs> you're like, you're like maybe to visit, but I don't want to live there right now. I don't know yeah. what I'd do there. Yeah. They and want so, you to live their dreams. It's something that exactly. they couldn't do. Right. That's what hockey dads or hockey yeah. moms. It's like, that's a lot of people mm. that, wished they could have played hockey when they were kids yeah not enough money too small whatever it is and now they're like forcing their kid into it or stage moms forcing yeah. their kids into That's like terrible. acting yeah no <laughs> no you gotta you gotta do it naturally you gotta want to do something mm -hmm. you like like I, for example like when i was a kid my mother would always say to me uh call your grandmother and call your your grandmother wants you to call her right and when she told me to call her, I made a point not to call her at all because <laughs> I don't want to call her because you told me to call her. Yeah, I'll call her when I, I'll call her when I want to call her, and then I would never call her, right? Because <laughs> and I don't want to call her. <laughs> yeah, then, fi then finally I called her on my own, and, and it made a difference because it was she. I called her because I felt the the need to call her, you know, yeah. not because someone told me to do it. You know, yeah. it's just I didn't like the authority telling me what to do, and even though if it was maybe right. I didn't want it, you know, doing it knowing that oh, I called her because she told me to call her. You know, it's like. So you should do things because you want to do it, not because someone forces you or, you, you, you know, you have, you know, you should do it like cause, because you like to. And that's it. Like, you know, because mm -hmm. then there's real meaning behind it. Right. Yeah. Like you, you have an intention on that phone call. Yeah. Instead, your relationship could have been this weird forced. Yeah. Hey, it's my weekly. I have to call you. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> like, well, I don't yeah, know what you, you want to talk you about. Know? What'd you eat today? Like, yeah, exactly. You're wasting her time. She's wasting yeah. your time. Like, who yeah. wants that? That sounds probably horrible. you hang up. You hang up the phone, and she tells her friends, "Jesus, my grandson called me every week and asked every what I fucking ate. week." You know? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then she's like, "You yeah. come over, and she's just like pissed at you. Like, why are you calling me every yeah. single week? I'm trying to eat and enjoy. Yeah, my... Leave me alone." <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, you got to do uh, what you feel. You feel more satisfaction when you do things on your own, right? Yeah. It's a lot of like uh, uh, humans do that a lot. We project our own thoughts, views, mm -hmm. insecurities onto other people yeah, and just assume that they think the same way that you think or that you have the same relationship with that person that they have with them. And it's just, yeah, like, not the same. We haven't realized that it's just not the case. Yeah. Like even your grandmother, like the analogy that brought you brought up there, yeah. like maybe your mom like should call her mom once a week. Yeah. But like you are like, I'm just going to call her when I feel like calling her because that's the relationship we have. Yeah. Like my grandma, but... was, my grandmother was fucking tough on me. Mm. I remember mm. like being stranded somewhere with my bike and I was just exhausted. And I, I called her and I was like, hey, I'm here. Are you could you come pick me up and then take me <laughs> home? And she goes, you have a bike? I was like, yeah. She goes, well, you can get home. I was like, yeah, but I'm <laughs> exhausted. And she goes yeah you'll probably be sore tomorrow like that's for <laughs> sure like she she wasn't giving me anything yeah. she goes okay bye and mm -hmm. just hangs up the phone i was like god damn but that was the relationship we had with each other she wasn't gonna go easy on me because she knew that i would was pussing out like i could be more capable than well you know you know that could come around when then she's in the retirement home and needs you to push it downstairs <laughs> yeah, in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. So you got Do a wheelchair yourself, lady <laughs> you got a wheelchair you can roll down Right. But the funny yeah, thing is yeah. that, that now I tell my kids to call my mother because <laughs> yeah. they don't have it in them to do it on their own. So I just yeah. say, you have to call so and so wants you to call her. Grandma wants you to call her. You know, uh, yeah. I'm going to go see her tomorrow. I'm going to go see her tomorrow the next day. And then they don't. And then you know what the problem is? When, as they get older, you're afraid that some they're going to die and they're going to mm. regret not going. Of course. Right. So they don't have to go all the time, but yeah. they should go because all the old people want is time. They have, they have nothing else in their lives. All they want is your time. Yeah. Just a few moments of your time yeah. to see how you're doing. Mm -hmm. The most like it's going to be very interesting when like millennial generation are the elderly people. Yeah. On the planet. Because like 
I think those retirement homes are going to look way different. Oh yeah. You know, we're going to be doing zoom calls to our family in there playing PlayStation five and like (laughs) catching up on video games that we didn't get to play our whole life because now we're just at the home. Like, but this generation, there's such a gap, such a gap in the technology knowledge Mm -hmm. that it's like, yeah, you have to be in front of them. That's all they know. Or you have to call them, not text them, call them because that's all they know. And you have to like keep giving the generation before you the way they looked at the world. You have to give them that energy instead of just, ah, send them a text. Yeah, because it's true. These older people, they they can't do email. They can't do text. They they can't do any of that stuff. So you can't keep in touch with them. But when our kids get to be, like you said, get old, then that will all be, they'll all know that because they will have learned, you know, we miss that, that. But who knows? There'll be some new technology that oh, we yeah. won't understand, and then, oh yeah, you know, sure. <laughs> Grandpa, just turn on the hologram, and I'll be right in yeah. front of you. I don't right know how you. does this thing work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, see, just it'll be I'm something. Plugging, yeah, I'm yeah, plugging, yeah. plug it back in. You end up unplugging your fucking life support. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, told, I thought that's how it worked. You know, well, oh, but listen, yeah. I was. How old are you? I'm 32. Okay, because yeah. my oldest son is 28, so you're okay. not that far off, you know. So no, it's no. like, like, you know, four years is uh, like my sons are four years apart, right? Mm. So, so you're still, you're still, I mean, you've been doing comedy for a while and you're, you started younger. Than, yeah, I started younger. when I was I remember, 19. Uh, I saw, I did, I think I did a, an earlier podcast with you talking about my meat when I was in the meat business yeah. with the Anto, with Anto, I think was there yeah, too. Yeah, it was called Pod at, Jobs. Uh, at Lars, Lars Studio, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a while back. That job or that podcast was called Pod Jobs because I Mm -hmm. wanted to interview comics and artists about like the odd jobs that they've had to like support their art. And I tried Mm -hmm. to find as many people that had like a job that I that was odd to me. Like I knew what Mm -hmm. I was good at, but I want to hear like, how do you get into that? You know what I mean? And like get the whole story. I should put that on like my Patreon or something because I probably still have the files. It was just audio, right? It didn't record any video, Mm -hmm. but it was just all audio files. Yeah, but it was good. It was uh, it was interesting. Yeah, I've always, as you can tell, I've always been obsessed with podcasts. This one's actually going the distance. The mm-hmm. last pod jobs, I think I stopped at like 60 or something like that. But this is episode 106. 106. For you, 106, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So we're getting up So there you now. said Hallworth was the last, uh, was the one before me? Yeah. Yeah, he's very, uh, I, li- I like him. He's very low energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's very low energy. <laughs> If you put, it's like if you put me and him in a room, I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, <'Cause>, you know, <laughs> the room might explode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I love Mark. I love that yeah. he like he made a video like telling people to go watch the episode and like mm. what the show was like about. And I'm like, this is a very Mark Hallworth thing to do. Like yeah. I'm so, and the word was community. So I'm like, he's really like mm. pushing. Yeah, yeah, we're a little ki- comedy community. Yeah. The word comedy is almost in there, right? <laughs> yeah, for real, for real. That was the other thought behind this podcast was like, oh, let me, uh, you know, I built up like a small audience, but like, you know, I have a decent amount of people that consistently check out my stuff. So why not mm-hmm. introduce them more to Canadian comics that they would never know of, mm-hmm. you know, unless they were in Toronto and saw you at a show? Yeah. It's not going to happen, right? Like I have a couple people yeah. from like the Philippines that watch yeah like one of them's like a teacher and uh it's just very interesting to me that i'm like oh because of the youtube stuff that i did i was like okay let me do something for myself and hopefully carry that audience over to to this podcast well the funny thing is that nowadays um like as far as canadian comics too people will go and see a show uh and they'll see you know they'll leave the place and they'll say, yeah, that guy was very funny. And who was it? And they'll say, Oh, I don't remember his name. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, like I've had friends go to shows. A friend of mine actually went to a show called jokes and tokes at the comedy bar. Oh yeah. I, I was remember supposed that. to be on it in February of last year, but I couldn't have COVID. So I couldn't go. <sighs> so they, they bought tickets anyway. And I wasn't there and they went home and they go, Oh, it was an awesome show. It was so funny. You know, I go, oh, that's great. I go, they go too bad. We missed you. And I said, yeah. And they said, Oh, the, the comics were great. I go, who'd you like? And they go, Oh, I don't know the names, but uh, there was one guy and he named the guy and I, I kind of figured I was Patrick Hakeem, you know, I go, yeah, talk about yeah, food? Yeah. he goes, yeah, I go, I go, that's Patrick Hakeem. He goes, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the Patrick guy, on. you know, so it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like, it's funny because 
they don't know the the Canadian like you know the comics. No. I just don't know. It's not, I don't blame them because unless you're on YouTube or in uh, Instagram all the time, like those YouTube stars, they have a name for them for themselves for really doing nothing but just doing everyday like just, just YouTube being videos, in your right? face every yeah. day, right? Like yeah. that's all it is. Yeah. So it's I mean that's tough. With, it's a, it's another that's the actual job part of comedy now is getting on social media to have a following to follow you to shows at least yeah you bring people to shows right at least and like we'll do it well it's a business card also mm -hmm. right like you know if let's say if they're at the show and they're like oh this person's really funny what was their name and they get the name and they look you up online you need it to be that they type your name in and then just immediately they are flooded with like yeah. who you are like your content here's his instagram here's his twitter here's whatever you're interested in he's got it like it's all it's all right there in the Google search. And uh, you don't really get that stuff unless there are SEO. Like there is something that has your name attached to it. Like when I searched Lenny Corrado, anytime your name has been mentioned on an online forum or site will show up in the search results, which will just help comedians. So mm -hmm. that's why for this show, it'll have your name in it. Like this episode yeah. will come up in Google images or mm -hmm. in the regular search. I'll put out like a, a clip of the episode too. So then it'll be yeah. into that algorithm, into that feed. And all it takes is like five people to be like, yeah, I'm going to go follow them. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'll, I'll, I'll share this, uh, a clip from this onto your Instagram and do like a yeah. collaboration so that it posts yeah. on both of our Instagrams. And uh, I've been seeing like decent, like crossover there where it's like, you're kind of mixing fan bases. And as Canadian comics, we just need to do more of that. Well, you know, that's that's what they're doing. I was going to say that's what they're doing because Nima Nazaro is doing a lot. You know, Nima's all yeah, over the place. Yeah, yeah, Nima's killing And it. he started doing stand-up, but he does mainly these, you know, these spots. He's, but the thing is, because he's got friends in comedy, like, so he'll do it with Andrew Packer or he'll do yeah. it with, um, with uh, Mark Synagogue, right? And so now you've got Mark's followers and Nima's followers and they join. Now they, they're sharing, like you said, sharing followers. So they'll each, uh, you know, uh, piggyback each other's followers and yep. increase you know, uh, based on that, based on, on, on the, on the way it works. Right. Yeah. It's so fantastic. That's, that's great for them. But like we, that's why, that's why I had you on, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's why, that's why I had Mark Hallworth on. That's why I like had Mike Wilmot on. That's why. Oh, Mike Wilmot. Yeah. You know, like I tried to think of like, okay, who are the comedians that like I love and I think are hilarious, but like, aren't, can't not even aren't just like yeah. can't necessarily always be doing the same kind of like sketches or constant videos it's like but i still want people to know who the fuck you are you know yeah yeah that's like, good that's, that's, that's important to me because it's yeah. like it helps all of us if you somebody sees you at a show and they immediately recognize oh that's lenny yeah from, from this from this from that from yeah that. you know somebody sees andrew and mark hanging out and they're like holy yeah. shit but they're just they're hanging together. out with his friends. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You guys are together at the same time. This is crazy. Yeah. Like <laughs> you're really friends. Like you're really, you really know yeah, each other. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Otherwise yeah. it would just be like, it's funny. We went all the way back to, to friends. Yeah. <laughs> the importance of friends, but it is. It's, but see, and these guys all start doing comedy together and then now they're kind of helping each other, but they're having a good time doing it. Right. They're, yeah. they're doing sketches. Like, you know, each one has their own, like Anthony Sinagogo has his own little things. And, and so does Andrew Packer and, and, uh, and so Nima, of course. Right. So, and they just, they just uh, help each other, you know? Yeah. Like it's, I love uh, seeing Ryan Long and Danny like doing oh, yeah. boys, boys cast together. They appear yeah. on podcasts together. Uh, and now I think Danny's doing like his own headlining weekends. But for a while, yeah. Ryan was like getting him to open for him across all those yeah. shows in the US. And I'm like, yeah, that's what you need and in then, comedy. You need a and good then JJ. friend. And, and JJ. JJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. JJ's so, like, JJ, JJ's a wild card. Though. Yeah. He's like, he's in Vegas. He's yeah, like, know. you know, he's just bouncing all over the place. Like, yeah. I love that about comedians too. It's just like yeah. the personalities you meet in this industry. Oh, yeah. It's just wild. He's a personality because he he's he lo like he loves to eat. JJ like you know <laughs> yeah, wherever yeah. he is, he talks about eating mo a lot too, right? So he's always talking he about New York. Eating. Yeah, he loves Vegas, so you know he's 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 having a good time. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy to see that those guys are like doing oh, yeah. well because we we you know we came up in the Toronto scene with a lot of these people, mm -hmm. and it's like it's incredible when you get to see the growth uh, after yeah. putting in so much work and having those shows where no one knows really who they are, but like they just mm -hmm. killed them laughing like a hundred times a week. They're doing mm -hmm. all of these different spots and just 
really hustling for it. Well, look at look at Nathan that Macintosh. He was in the this past August. He was that in the great Luke Lindale example. had Luke Lindale had like a Danforth Comedy Festival. Oh he yeah, brought, how was that? It, it was great. He brought he brought the uh, Nathan Macintosh. He crushed for like two shows. Like you know, he was and and you know, I mean, we know him from Toronto, and then yeah. we know him from all the TV shows he's done lately. And in the states, he's got like a little show of his own, a little sitcom type thing. I don't know what exactly what it is. I think uh, it's, it's like based on his, like loosely based on his sort life, of, yeah, sort of. Yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. And what about yeah. uh? Steph Tolev too. She Steph she opened you know, Bill Burr, right? She she's amazing. Yeah, and you've got like uh, Matt O'Brien. Yeah, and um, what's his wife's name? I'm blanking. Uh, La- La- Julia Lakowitz. Julia. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're killing it too over in LA. Yeah. It's just like Toronto comedy <laughs> getting all over the map on this one. Ron yeah, Jossel. Ron Jossel, yeah. And uh, Angelo T- Angelo Tsarukas, he's well, he's from he's from he lives in LA now, but he was from Toronto. You know, there's a lot of Toronto comics that are they're going do shows in the, in the states a lot now too, because but they're based here still. You know, like um, yeah. and and they go to LA a lot, and they goes and they go to Vegas. Like Tricks did so good. Tricks is doing so great now. You know, there should be someone, someone somewhere that runs some type of like let's take the. Canadian Association for Stand Up Comedy, right? Yeah. Cask. Yeah. They should have almost on their website like all of these people. Yeah. You know, so that like it becomes a directory for notable stand up comedians in Canada. Yeah. And it's a list that constantly gets updated based on, you know, people hitting these major milestones yeah. to the point where they can have like a good bio that shows their accolades or whatever throughout their career. And then you have this directory that you can go to, or maybe it's yeah. even the thing that people just sign up and put themselves on. Like that could even be a hilarious, yeah, it's like, like, a, like a, you know, like, uh, where is, where is, is a Canadian comic now? Where are they? Yeah. Just, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. You get a map they, with like little pins. Yeah. <laughs> like, where are you now? Like, where have you, where, cause a lot of them are out there doing stuff like Ron Jossel's out every, he's on the road all the time. I think okay. he's doing like cruise he's ships road. too a couple times. Yeah, I did that too. Yeah, and yeah. Um, there's like locally, locally, like uh, Frank Spadone has been doing a lot of uh, Instagram lately, right? And he, I just went to see him at the Avalon Theater in Niagara Falls. There was like 1,300 people there. Crazy. It was packed. It was yeah. and it was amazing. He he'll do. He has a following. They will go and see him twice. For example, the, the wow. same. You know, I mean, he did an hour and 15 minutes that night, and they were they're looking for old stuff too. They asked him for. They asked him for older material that they they remember from years ago. Wow! It's like a, you go see a singer and you ask for the you go see a singer. You want to see some of the old songs, right? Yeah. But they usually they'll pay maybe one or two, but you know you want to you want to see that. That's that's why you went to see. That's why you liked them originally, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's good to get that following that will repeat customers. You know that will will follow. And you know what it's like. Like if you do a show and it's the Johnny Rogers show, mm-hmm. you know that everybody in that audience paid to see you. So yeah. you you don't have to feel. You, you're on top of the world because it's like they're here to see me like i know that I, I don't have to i don't have to win anybody over right yeah yeah it makes it a lot easier like even well even like producing my own monthly show in ottawa um the first show it was very much like they're not here to see me it was just like they saw that there was a comedy show at the mm-hmm. local restaurant that they like visiting so they're like cool let's let's go tickets are 15 bucks sure let's do it and uh and so i had to win them over but then at the second show uh i had people that came back from the first show that were like we really liked it we wanted to come back again to like see what lineup that you come up with this time so yeah the second time just hosting it i was like i feel so comfortable because like not only am i the one running this producing this i have no one to impress the bar is already very cool with the show yeah. they're not like breathing down my neck about anything so you need to find those little bits of like comfort zones that you can create for yourself to build that confidence on stage. Well, the thing about being a host, which is, I talked about this when I was, uh, I hosted the, the, the the one Wednesday, we alternate who hosts the rising star, the yuck yuck. So this past Wednesday I hosted, right? Yeah. So I just compared to hosting a comedy show. I just said, listen, I'm your host for the evening. I said, my job is to make sure everything runs smoothly and uh, if there's anybody, anybody uh, want, don't heckle the comics, you know, take it out on me, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But I also said, this is like when you have a party at your house 
the host, which is me, never enjoys themselves. Okay, we have to make sure that the the liquor is there, the the ice is ready, yeah, 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 the, yeah. The, the toilet's not flooded, uh, that the the people are not uh, checking out the other rooms of the house. You know, like, yeah, yeah. So when you're a host, you can't enjoy the party <laughs> when you're a host, right? No, but no. You're the one that's in charge. Like you, so hosting sometimes for you to host a show. If you hosted your show every week, you know what the audience wants. So you'd be a great host because you would. You don't want them to come and see you because you're hosting. They're there to see the five comics that you're bringing yeah. to the table that night, right? And then once in a while, you throw yourself into that mix and you have a guest host, right? I'm sure you do that, right? So you, Yeah, I haven't done it yet, but that's host definitely every week. something. Yeah, I'm considering. <laughs> well, you, you can't host every week because you know why? Because it becomes a it becomes a, like, I've seen hosts host every week and then it becomes like the same thing every week. If someone yeah. comes to see a second show well, and you're hosting again, I'm you kind of hear all yeah. I'm doing monthly, so just so that I have time to like oh, generate good. new material in between, yeah. and then mix it up a little bit too. Yeah, and you've got and you got current affair too, current current things that happen that can, you can throw in there. Exactly. Yeah. And right. you're in Ottawa. You've got politics. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, it's a, and it's a very political like crowd, yeah. right? Because you got a lot of like government workers. Yeah. Maybe they're conservative party government workers. Maybe they're liberal mm -hmm. government party workers. So it's like I find that stuff hits a lot harder when you're talking about those things here. Uh, which is also something to be careful of as a comic, like to not get too mm -hmm. geographical with your comedy. Like it can't just be like about your town or about your yeah, city. Yeah. Like if I mentioned Subway, they think sandwich shop, not like yeah. the TTC, right? Yeah. But what about the the truckers thing out there? That was wild out there. The truckers. Yeah, yeah. But nobody so, really talks about that anymore. I think there's yeah. a couple comics. Like I heard Todd Van Allen doing a joke about mm -hmm. uh the truckers thing and but like i haven't seen too many comics like still making jokes about that yeah it was very very current and it had to be i think it had like a lifespan of two three weeks you know yeah yeah you know i mean everyone's doing it after right so yeah it doesn't new. become like a bit that you could repeat right mm -hmm. like i came up with a bit about the um the whole bud light scandal but oh, I, yeah. I i made it i like wrote it in a way where i could do it and uh, I could do it past the time of that being a relevant talking mm -hmm. point, right? Like it just becomes a, a joke about like people getting offended at beer, you know, like it just. Well, you know, but you know what, Johnny, you, you, that's good because you had that joke, right? And it, it served its purpose, right? But now it's coming back because it, the WWF, uh, I mean, the, 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 they, they signed a deal now oh, with yeah? Bud Light. So look it up. They signed a deal. The you know the the. That's uh, the other thing. I always forget to do research whenever you're yes, writing but, a joke. Just, research because stuff. years ago that guy Dana White used. They used to use uh, Bud Bud Light or Bud uh -huh. Beer was their sponsor years ago. Then they went with the the, the another one that was really the the main one. I forget what, what brand it is now. But now he went back to Bud Light, and it's a big boost for them because they were their money their ratings their stock was going down. Yeah. And the rest now this uh, uh you know uh, cage wrestling whatever it is uh. they they. they 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 brought it back, so check it That's out after. Hilarious. You could use that. You could reuse that. Like yeah. Somehow, you know? Well, there's something else that yeah, I could just extend it even mm -hmm. more now that there's like more talking points on that. Yeah, that's a yeah. lucky, that's a lucky one to get when yeah. when, it, when it continues. Yeah. Um, sure. Lenny, I'm if gonna, you have something, yeah. I'm gonna shout out your social media here for people to follow. Mm -hmm. You are mm -hmm. at Lenny the Butcher with one N in Lenny. One N. Um. Uh, at Lenny the Butcher, also on Twitter. That was Instagram, mm -hmm. I said before. And at Lenny Corrado Comedy on YouTube. I know you're not that active on there, but I always tell people, no, go, I have go to the YouTube. Things. Go to the YouTube anyways. Mm -hmm. Watch those videos that are there and just yeah. subscribe to just support you in that way. Yeah, that's great. That's good. It's uh, it's it's hard to get people. Well, like like I, when I've done a few shows, I did a few shows with Frank Spadone. I middled for him. And mm -hmm. being with Frank Spadone helped a lot because... I would be on my Instagram and people would see that I would open for him and they go, wow, that's amazing. You know, yeah. and I opened for another guy, another guy from the States, his name is Nikki Smigs and his okay. claim to fame is he's 20 years old, but he, he does Maniscalco imitations, like amazing. Oh no Perfect. way. <laughs> yeah. And he happens to be Italian. The last name is not Italian, but he's, but he did really well at, at Jokers in Toronto. He sold out two shows, right? No way. Two, two nights, four shows he sold out. Doing and, Maniscalco impressions. Well, he did other things too, but okay, that was, okay. He, 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 <laughs> I thought that no, was on, just online. Act. He did a lot of those things, right? Yeah, and yeah. Frank Spinone, Frank Spinone sold out five shows at Joker's. Wow. Okay? So that's like 750 people there, like yeah, over yeah. over a weekend. Damn. So the following really helps, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure.
Well, keep at it, man. I, I yeah. say you should uh, mafioso up with all the uh, Italian comics. Yeah, creative well, we, we need to do that. We haven't done that. You know, yeah, Toronto's yeah. becoming like a, it's like Asians are everywhere. Dude, have uh, an Italian in, comedy festival. That would there has to be. Game has to be. We over. had one. We had one about four years ago when the where Raptors won the world. Uh, won the won the bring the it back. You got to run that back. Yeah, because that seems like it's all lining up together. At least in my head, you already know yeah. those two guys. They could be the yeah. headliners on each yeah. of the days. You do, yeah, it. do it in Little lot, Italy. Yeah. Just do a, do it in Little Italy. Couldn't be more fitting, right? Like Yeah, the old theaters are the Royal Theater. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Put me on as a yeah. British well, uh, Johnny. Irish guest. Yeah, yeah. Johnny, Call me Yanni for the night. <laughs> Johnny, that's it. Just Johnny. One name. We have Johnny here. <laughs> just Johnny. Right? I'll yeah. come in a leather jacket. I'll slip yeah. my hair a little you know? more. Toothpick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're you're a bit young, but you'll be okay. You'll fit in. Yeah, yeah, I'll get in there. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. I really oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, appreciate you taking the time to do this. Oh, thanks um, a lot. Good luck. Yeah, I'll send you the link and everything once I get sure. that up. But hope you have a good yeah, rest sure. of your night. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. You too, man. Take care. See ya. You've been listening to the Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.